So I've been doing freelance filmmaking for a little while now and I've put together a list of things which should help you to keep your clients happy and also avoid those big misunderstandings. <laughs> Hello, my name is Simon Cade and this is DSLR Guide. So if you're a filmmaker, the chances are at some point in your career you will have to work with clients. And by clients, I mean just anyone who commissions you to make a film. If it's a musician who wants you to make a music video for them, or if it's a CEO of a company who wants a promotional video. So the first thing is that everything will be a lot simpler if you get paid before the project and you also meet up with them face to face before shooting anything. Because the thing that happens is firstly, they will cancel on you well before the event after you've talked on email maybe and then they just cancel on you and you suddenly haven't got any work or the other thing that happens is they don't pay you till after the shoot and then you have to really chase them up to make sure they pay you and I recently had one where it took weeks before I got paid and I had to phone them up loads of times so that's just a general thing the sooner you get paid and the sooner you can meet them face to face the less likely they are to kind of give you problems. The other thing is it's really important that you get a contract signed before the shoot. Even if it's a free project, it's really useful just to have a kind of outline of what you expect from the client and what the client expects from you. This really can solve a lot of misunderstandings because you can always refer back to that document that says, here's what was expected of each other. And on this week's blog post, I'm going to write some things that I think are really important to include in your contract. So do check that out if you're interested, link in the description. So the next thing is creative control. Every once in a while you'll come across a client who is extremely particular about what they want. And in this case, I think there's two things you have to do. The first thing is look at it with your kind of filmmaker eyes and think, how is this going to affect the audience? You know, is there a better way that we can present their ideas, the client's ideas? But at the end of the day, they are the client. And if they feel really strongly about it, then you do have to kind of go along with their ideas because they're hiring you to make a video. So you always want to please the client, but it's definitely worth kind of talking to them and suggesting, well, how about this would be a better way of doing it? And the guys over at Still Motion, who I've mentioned before, they do amazing stuff for the filmmaking community. You should definitely check them out. But they had this idea that you could make two versions. You make the one that pleases the client, and then you do another one, which is a director's cut. And that is exactly how you would want to make it. And the idea with that one is you put that on your website so that it's not the client's ideas that are shown on your website, but it's kind of your creativity. And that should help you to, you know, you, you don't have to feel like you're putting someone else's work on your website. So that's a great tip from Still Motion. Like I said, they've got some great stuff out there, so you should definitely check them out. So the next thing to remember is that clients are a lot more likely to hire someone who they've already worked with. So that means when you're on set, you should be completely professional and completely punctual and just kind of treat each job as a job interview for the next one. That's a very common phrase that gets thrown around a lot in filmmaking. I think it's very true that even if the client's a jerk, then you should still act completely professional because you never know who's gonna kind of pass your name around and where you could get if you don't kind of burn all those bridges with clients by you know being stroppy or something. So I think it's really important that you be totally professional and then that way you can have the greatest opportunity to work again with them or for them to be recommended. And personal recommendations are huge. I had one small project that I did, which then led on to two much bigger, much better projects. And that was purely word of mouth. So it really is worthwhile to kind of think about how you're presenting yourself the whole time that you're on set. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this week. I would like to remind you that on the blog post, I've got a list of things that I think you should include in a contract. And also actually, if you think that there's anything else, any other principles about working with clients that I haven't talked about, then please do write them in the comments and I might even put them on the blog post too. So yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.